So, <laughs> so we just wanted to talk to you about things that went wrong our first week of full timing. We were driving and talking and having fun and just getting up to San Francisco, and we were super excited because we were about 45 minutes away um, from our campsite in Petaluma. Um, we were passing the city and they have so many freeways that end in 80 there and we didn't hear what the GPS said and so we just quickly looked at it and we took I don't know like the 880 or 580 west instead of east or something like that and we ended up waiting in line for two hours to pay $20 to drive halfway across the bridge to Treasure Island which is tiny and try to navigate our massive fifth wheel through these, these little windy streets on this tiny island in the middle of the bay and then turn around and drive back across the half of the bridge. It took us two hours and then we ran into a little traffic so it added probably about another two and a half, almost three hours to our trip. So that was the first thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, so we get to the campsite. It's the KOA in Petaluma and I go in to check in, like Jason stays with the rig, I go in and I had made the reservation as well and so it's under my name, she's looking it up, she finds it and then she's like, oh, she's like, well that's your big rig out there, right? And I was like, yeah, and she's like, oh, um, we have you in a 30 amp spot. And I was like, oh, okay, like, I don't think your website, like, specified, like, I put in the length and what we needed and it said that it would accommodate us and she's like no you can put 50 amp on the website and I was like all right well okay I guess I just missed it at the end of checking out I asked her I was like so just for future reference like when I book at KOA do I need to call to request 50 amp and she was like no you can book it right on the website and she had her computer with her and so she pulls up the KOA website and she's looking through it trying to book a site and sure enough, you can't request 50 or 30 amp. Like, you've just put in your length and, you know, what you need and full hookups and stuff like that. So, anyway, it didn't matter, but she was like, oh, I've worked here for four years, and I never knew that you couldn't request this on the website. That explains a lot of complaints we've gotten. It's like, okay, well, glad I could help you out. It wasn't a big deal, but anyway, that was the second thing. So then we pull into our campsite and KOA is a whole different beast compared to the only other campsite system we stayed in which is Thousand Trails and there's kids running everywhere and we were a little frazzled already after sitting in traffic and trying to navigate merging um, with cars earlier so there's just kids running across the street willy nilly. Um, so we pull up to our site, and, you know, it's very, very crowded. They, they, they pack you into KOAs. So if we pull into our site, just looking at the rig, you can tell that, like, the non-door side or the driver's side of the, the rig is just sloped down a bunch. Rookie mistake, we didn't check before if our site was level. So then we tried to half acid and we have some of the links leveling blocks which are great but we only had 10 and we like to use at least six on we have six levelers so we like to use six on the levelers um so we had you know four left over so we kind of stacked up two and two and t tried to drive on to them which was difficult in a gravel pit i had to put it in four by four even to just pull the rig up the hill onto a set of to, I don't know, uh, it was our first time, so check how level your site is before and make sure you have enough link lo links levelers to build a nice platform to drive up onto instead of trying to just go straight up onto the level that you want it to be at. So then <laughs> we get it up on the levelers, so we're like, okay, let's get the coach off the truck and let's start like really setting up. So we go to do that and we realize that the way we had pulled in and then needing to drag the trailer onto the leveling blocks, like the truck was at an angle. And instead of being smart human beings 
and getting off the leveling blocks and just backing up and pulling in the pulling the truck straight we said let's just unhitch it how it is this was our prob our biggest mistake and our biggest lesson and we I'm like I'm almost embarrassed to talk about it but here goes anyway so we put the front jacks down we lift up the trailer and we unhitch the truck the trailer starts to slide backwards and you I don't even know like that feeling of pure terror because you're just sitting there thinking oh my god we just lost the trailer and so Jason was on this side and I was on the other side and I our first reaction literally was to grab the trailer. Like, we're both holding it as if this, like, 16,000 pound... Yeah, like, we could actually stop it. Yeah. And so it rolls off the leveling blocks that we had put on. And that is the only thing that actually stopped it. Was because you have two tires, one in front of the other... And the leveling blocks on the back tire, once it fell off the blocks and started to roll... That, those back tire blocks is what stopped that front tire and that is the only reason our trailer didn't go slamming into the next campground which leads <laughs> us to the next mistake yeah. we didn't chalk our tires always chalk your tires uh, we have <laughs> literally we have four chocks and a set of X chocks to go in between our tires Like it's not that we didn't have them it's just we're newbies and yeah, we just we're in didn't. a rush and we didn't think about it. So now I've even purchased an additional set of Lynx leveler chocks. Now we literally have chocks for every scenario. <laughs> for <days>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so after that absolutely terrifying experience, we realized then the hitch of the trailer was actually sideways in the truck. And so now our hitch was basically stuck in our truck. The truck bed hitch like was completely turned sideways. It has this huge like gash in it now. And then on the coach hit, a uh, like lubrication plate that has a big gash in it now too. Jason had to get in the truck and maneuver it, like seriously moving it like inches forward and inches back because the hitch of the truck coach was stuck in between the truck bed and the side of the truck bed he basically just had to like scrape it against the side of the truck bed and pull out no massive damage but still stupid stupid mistakes so then after that we go inside and we go to bring out our slides and they don't work we're not even getting like battery readout or anything like that. So we plug the RV in, still nothing. No lights, nothing. I don't know, first thing, same thing as a house when you have no power. We found our breakers in, inside and we turned them off, turned them back on, and thank God it started working. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I would have done if, if it didn't work. I would have cried. Yeah, yeah, it was. We would have found the hotel. It was a bad day. And I would have said, Ooh. Let's not do this. We're crazy. Let's yeah. return the coach. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It was one of those, like, what the hell have yeah. we done like moments. Like one thing after another. Yeah. So, <clears throat> lights come on. We pull out the slides. We hook up everything. Um, and then, you know, you start to walk around. And in the kitchen, I have, like, my prized possession is my KitchenAid. My KitchenAid fell off the counter and dented the floor and like took a chunk of wood off one of the slides which the kitchen aids made it through both yeah. other drives so i don't i don't know what happened yeah and i read online that like heavier items on your counter are actually fine like we put stuff away every yeah. time we move but the kitchen aid i was like oh no it's fine it's heavy enough but yeah, yeah. so it like you could tell it took a tumble and it took things down with it so that was another thing to just add to the list so then the next day i pull the truck in after we went shopping and i i look and i'm kind of in the the road a little bit so i'm gonna move <laughs> the truck backing up i think my mirrors were still set for towing so i didn't have great visual and didn't really see the fifth wheel hitch but of course i back up into it with my passenger side fender and just 
scratch it dent a little bit. No damage to the, the fifth wheel, just a scratch on the truck, but still, that was just day two misery. Then on the third day, we found out that our Amazon business that we have, our listing got removed. Not to go into too much detail, but yeah. some tweet went viral, and it, it ended up having to do with our listing and a couple other businesses' listings getting taken down. Yeah. So it led to some like greater conversation. It had nothing yeah. to do with our, our no, listing no. being bad or anything like that. It was just... It Amazon, led to a political conversation. Yeah, and Amazon doesn't like anything to do with political conversations, blah, blah, blah. So they removed our listing. We're, we got it back up. Well, that's it. Learn from our mistakes. Yes. Uh, I'm sure we'll be making another one of these videos, but hopefully not anytime soon. <laughs> Cheers to more adventures.